Hey guys, Victor here coming at you again with another update to Tier Elements, which, you know, we're doing a lot of these a lot just because there's so many different ways you can build it, so many new tech choices that we can always choose from that I pretty much want to showcase it every time I feel like something has substantially changed, which with this deck happens pretty frequently. So with that out of the way, let's just jump straight into the deck profile. So we're going to be starting off the monster lineup, of course, with the traditional Tier Element lineup being three Tier Elements catch Tira, the one Havness, the one Merly, the one Sharon, and the two Tier Elements Rhino Heart. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Sometimes people play three Tier Elements Rhino Heart. Sometimes you can play two. Uh, it's honestly up to you. It doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Uh, next, you have to play the Ishizu engine with the Tier Elements. So you play the one Kelbeck, the one Agito, the one Mudora, and the one Keldo. You know, fairly standard so far. Uh, then, for this specific version, I decided to go all in with Revolution Synchron. So, because of that, we're going to be playing three Revolution Synchrons. Uh, this is something that I wanted to play at three of instead of, like, you know, doing triple tuning plus two Revolution Synchron just because there's so many cards in this format or so many decks in this format that are playing Drone and Lockbird, which, you know, if you're you, uh, trying to abuse a card like Tuning, um, a lot of the times, getting hit by Drone can just straight up in your turn. So I'd rather just maximize the odds by playing as many Revolution Synchrons as possible instead of doing the opposite and playing as many Tunings as possible. But uh, yeah, this card's insane and, you know, it gets so many plays going. You pretty much always want to open it. And then to go with the Revolution Synchron, I decided to try out, you know, like the newest talk of the town in Tier Elements being Beast King of the Swamps. So this card is going to be replacing our regular King of the Swamp as, you know, it's going to pretty much do the exact same thing. The only addition or the only downside is that you're not going to be able to play Polymerization or have a way to surge Polymerization because this card doesn't do that. But the synergy that it does offer you in this deck is honestly kind of invaluable because uh, it's another level four, which is great for Revolution Synchron, which because it means you're going to be able to activate its effects a lot more frequently to be able to special summon, you know, your Ancient Fairy Dragons and then go into your Visus Amartara and, you know, your standard stuff. But it being a level four also helps you make more rank four plays, such as Time Thief Redoer, right? So you can go Normal Summon Beast King of the Swamps. After you special summon a Talmud Sharon, for example, you can go into Redoer, detach the Sharon and Beast King of the Swamps. And then, you know, since you have no monsters on the field, after you get detached and banished your Time Thief Redoer, uh, your Sharon is pretty much going to be free to resolve into pro potentially either like a Rural Colossus or a Grappa, depending on what your hand looks like. And your opponent can even bestial you because you won't have a monster on field. So yeah, uh, cards, you know, it has potential. I like it, but I don't know if it's better than regular King of the Swamp. For sure, if you're not playing Revolution Synchrons and you don't play this card, this is only in here because of the fact that we play Revolution Synchron. But uh, it did its job, honestly. You know, it's fine. <laughs> uh, next, we're going to play the Destiny Hero Engine. So we have the two Malicious, you know, really good stuff. Makes Beatrice easily. Uh, but to go with that, we go with Denier. So I still really like Denier just because I feel, I don't know, like it's it's really underrated in being able to, you know, help you flex your potential plays, especially because Denier helps you go into easy cross sheeps as you can just do your basic stuff, you know, go malicious, uh, special summon malicious, Denier effects, summon Denier, stack malicious on top, link both of those into cross sheep, uh, make sure cross sheep points like a fusion monster. Typically it's going to be like Destiny Hero Dangerous. Then you're going to activate your Malicious again, summon to a zone of points to cross sheep will activate, special summoning something back from the graveyard. It could be your Diviners, it can be your Rhino Hearts, you know, things of that nature. Then you can overlay with your Malicious into your Dangerous, make Beatrice, and uh, things just get really out of hand really fast for your opponent just because of the potential that Denier offers you. Like, yeah, sometimes it's a brick, but as long as you get like a tier name to fuse it away into Dangerous, you're pretty much going to be solid every time. Uh, then, speaking of bricks, you still play the one Blackwing Zephyros. Like I said, I wanted to try as many good level 4s as possible, and Zephyros is probably one of the best, as even if you hard draw it, it's fine as long as you have Revolution Synchron because of the plays that it opens up. Like, you can go Normal Zephyros, Revolution Synchron into Ancient Fairy Dragon, go Ain or activate your Revolution Synchron in Graveyard, Special Summon it back, and then from here, you can either make your Visa Summer Tara, or you can do some cool stuff like you can go Zephros, bounce your Revolution Synchron, uh, Ancient Fairy Dragon, Special Summon Revolution Synchron, then go into Baron de Floor. You know, whatever the situation calls for. Like I said, this deck is very flexible with what you, plays you can make as the cards in your hand and the cards that you milk constantly, you know, change the outcomes of certain plays. And even then, 
it's still like a really good card to be able to reuse cards such as Chilomans Kashtira or your Primeval Planet Parallel Rhino, depending on what point in the game you mill it. So yeah, I really like this card, even though it is technically a brick. Uh, you have your Bomb card and Diviner of the Herald, Normal Summon it, Special Summon it, whatever. The moment it hits the field, it becomes an instant threat because it will be sending either a Kelbeck or an Agito to help you mill five more cards. Uh, and you're playing one Jet Synchron. Uh, I'm just trying this out, but it's not that great yet. And I say that because of the fact that we're not playing Kashtira Fenrir, but I'll get more into that in a bit because Kashtira Fenrir is something that I want to touch upon. Uh, then after that, you're playing one Hell Shadal Hollow. So out of all the Shadal monsters, I feel like Hell Shadal is honestly like the best one. I know people typically only play like Shadal Beast if they want to play one Shadal monster, but that never really made much sense to me just because Shadal Beast draws a card as opposed to Hell Shadal, which, you know, mills cards, which this deck is pretty much based upon. You don't really care about drawing, but you do care about milling constantly. So, you know uh just something to consider i don't really like having a heavy shuttle engine i just think it's boring if i'm being brutally honest but uh what this card does allow you to do even if you don't want to play window right being able to mill cards is always a solid thing and then for the final monster we're playing destrudo i love destrudo it's so flexible with the plays it can make because it can literally become pretty much any single level if you wanted to make it level six you copy a revolution synchron that was brought back and that in turn opens up potential beatrice plays um if you have like denier and malicious that's an insta baron play because you go uh malicious summon itself summon denier stack your malicious uh destrudo copy your denier make it a level four synchro for baron with it in the malicious and then you know things like that um if you have any level four plus a tailman's cash tira that's also another free baron play um this card automatically becomes any level seven monster which in turn turns into ancient fairy dragon in case you don't open up the revolution synchro online uh, like you can just do so many things and those are just the synchro plays like you can still fusion summon with this into cards like mud dragon you can exes with this into cards like time thief redoer or beatrice as previously mentioned um this card's just insane with the versatility it offers a stack and that's it for the monster lineup but like i said i wanted to talk about kashtira fenrir really quick so fenrir is a really good card and i would 100 percent be playing it however um, I'm waiting to see what the Forbidden and Limited list is like because I don't know if I want to play one or two. And with how well Kashtira has been doing, let's face it, that deck is probably not going to exist come the new Forbidden and Limited list. So I don't really want to put like too much investment into that type of card. But if they all they do is like limit Fenrir, then I for sure play the one Fenrir. If they put Fenrir to two or just leave it untouched, then I play two Fenrir, you know. Or... Even if I don't play two Fenrir, I could just play like one Pressure Planet Raid Soth plus one Fenrir and, you know, try to get the engine going. But I wanted to try to make this deck as resilient to Droll as possible. And in order to do that, two Fenrir is probably the way to go. But like I said, I'm just waiting for the list to come out to, before I permanently decide on what ratios I want to play. And with that, like I said, that's the monster lineup. And now we can finally move on to the spells and traps. So for the spell lineup, we're going to be starting off with three Primeval Planet Pearl Rhino. We're not playing Pressure Planet Raid Soth because, like I said, we're not playing Tournament's Cash Tira. However, if the deck does, or at least the engine gets off pretty lightly with, like, limits, potentially. <laughs> so, you know, they limit Fenrir, limit Pressure Planet Raid Soth, whatever. Um, then we'll probably include both, or we do a 2-0 Cash Tira Fenrir line. Either one works for this deck, but double Fenrir is probably better just because it helps you fight through draw a lot more easily. Uh, then we're playing two tournament scream. I'm constantly going back and forth if I want to play two or three of this. I think for now two is perfectly fine. Uh, you play your good one of spells and foolish burial, foolish burial goods. Uh, tournament's grief. Shout out to Shun Ping for finally putting people on this. It's about time people recognize how good this card actually is. As you know, it's basically emergency teleport, and then it helps you get back your banished Suliax. This card does so much for the deck, and it's honestly just insane that people considered it bad for so long uh you play the one called by the grave to help you potentially answer dimension shifter but let's face it that card's at three unfortunately and this card's at one so chances are it's not going to be able to stop it um uh, but it's fine if you draw it it's great if you don't whatever <laughs> uh, you play the one tuning helps you get your revolution synchrons or your jet synchron depending on what's in your hand and then in addition to that you get to mill a card for some reason which you know sick um especially if you had like a terrible Suliak, right so you go tuning Add your Evolution Synchron, uh, Mill Soliac, Soliac's effect will activate, adding your Tailman's Kashtira. You go Tailman's Kashtira effect, banishing the Soliac that you just milled, mill three more. And then depending on what you hit, you can probably just normal summon your Revolution Synchron to make Baron, or if you drew, you know, 
like a if you mill like a Zephyros, right? You can go Zephyros, bounce back your Telemans Castira to use it for your next turn. Then you can go for your Ancient Fairy Dragon play with your Zephyros and your Revolution, which in turn gets you to Visa on Ratara, and it just snowballs out of control just because of one good mill. So, yeah, I really like the card, but I don't want to play more than one just because, like I said, Drone Lockbird is everywhere in this format, as well as Dimension Shifters. So, um, this card does become a liability at multiples. And then for the final spell, we're playing one instant fusion. So we don't have Tailaments, uh we don't have Kick Coloss anymore, right? <laughs> uh, which, you know, sucks for us, great for everyone else. But this card still has a lot of really cool uses. So you can still special summon cards like El or Shadal Winda, which gives you access to like a level 8 play. But the main value from instant fusion comes from summoning your Mud Dragon. So depending on the matchup, Mud Dragon can straight up win the game because it prevents your opponent from targeting your cards. And then um, if you're going first, this card just becomes, like I said, another level four monster, which in turn turns on your Revolution Synchron and gives you access to your Beasts and Ratara and, you know, all those other really cool lines, all without using up your normal summon. So, you know, I really like the card, but if you're not playing Revolution Synchrons, then you sh probably should not be playing Instant Fusion. It's just something that I feel adds a lot more synergy to the deck, which is why I decided to play the one. And that's it for the spells. And then you have the two Tarlem and Suliac for traps and the one Trivi Karma. Meta Noise, Crime, and the side as always. I don't think it's worth maining, especially if you're like me and you can't win a die roll to save your life. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's it for the spells and traps. And if I made any changes, I'd probably consider trying to play two or three Super Polymerization just because I feel like the boards that a lot of people are making are honestly like really weak to it. Um, you have Rescue Ace, right? Their deck ends entirely on fire monsters, which means it's very easy to Super Poly against. Um, you have the new Chimeras, which is a fusion-based deck, which means Predaflant, Jerkers, Topelia will be able to feast upon it. Uh, you have a bunch of rogue decks that pretty much already always lost to Super Poly. Labyrinth, to an extent, they all play dark fiend monsters, so you can Super Poly them. Uh, Kashtira, sometimes depending on your hand, right, if they just go for the Arise Heart Plast play, if you open up Destiny Hero Denier, for example, you set Denier, then you Super Poly away, make Dangerous, and that in turn will eventually lead to you making Beatrice. Um, there's just so many cool applications that Super Poly has currently that I desperately want to fit it in, but I just don't know how to go about like cutting cards. Um, uh, I'd probably end up cutting Call by the Grave, uh, maybe tuning some of the monsters, maybe, I don't know, uh, Jet Synchron, <laughs> you know, there, there's room for it, but it's very tight. But if you can make it work, it will do so much work for you in this metagame. And with that, that's... Uh, you know the end of the spell and trap lineup portion and now we can finally move on to the extra deck now the extra deck while it is partially solved it's still incredibly tight for what this deck is trying to accomplish so you know just keep that in mind uh for stuff that you've already seen you know we've got the time thief redoer the beatrice idea of the eternal that's it for the exes uh you play the one cross sheep i decided to ultimately just cut underworld goddess to make room for other synchro monsters and fusion monsters so this is the only link that we actually play in the deck, but it's fine just because Cross Sheep is so broken with the plays that it offers you. Um, sometimes, you know, I'll miss the Underworld Goddess just being able to link an opponent's link to away and make my own guys, but um, it's fine, you know, it's honestly whatever. Uh, for Synchros, you play the one Ancient Fairy Dragon and the Visa and Ratara, you know, literally any level 4 plus Revolution Synchron means you could search for any card in your deck. Uh, you play the Baron to Floor. Just because it's a free negate, very easy to summon. And then this is probably like the biggest flex spot in the deck. So you have tons of choices that you can play. Um, I just opted for Side Frame Lord Omega. I really like what Omega can do because it recycles your Ashizu Shufflers, which means you can be like a little bit more greedy with them during your turn and shuffle back your resources. And then during the standby phase, you put them back with Side Frame Lord Omega. Uh, it puts back your Trivi Karmas, it puts back any potential monsters hit by Bestials. This card just does so much for the deck, and I just I just love it. But uh, there are other options you can play, right? Like, this isn't even probably, like, the best level 8 Synchro monster. You can play Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. You can play um, the the Dragite Synchro. I can't remember the entire name, but it's the water one that negates spells and traps as long as you have a water monster in your grave, which we played plenty of in the form of Tailaments Cash Tira and Tailaments Rhino Heart. Uh, you can play like a Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend if you're scared about going at the time. <laughs> uh, you have so many cool plays, but I think Omega is just like, it fits my playstyle a lot more. Just like the flexibility aspect, being able to return back your banished cards, ripping a card out of the opponent's hand, you know, things of that nature. Uh, for fusions, you play the Mud Dragon of the Swamp, you know, 
uh, Garura, Dragos Topelia. These are your Super Poly targets that we make very easily in this deck, even without Super Poly. Uh, you have your Beast King of the Swamp targets. So you have your Graffa, your Roll Coloss, and your Kaleido Heart. Uh, you have your Destiny Hero Dangerous, which in turn gets you to your Beatrice a lot more easily. Uh, but even like without the Dangerous, right, you can still make Beatrice somewhat easily because we have Diviner of the Herald, which becomes a level 6. Uh, you have the Malicious to combine with that. Uh, you have Garura because, let's face it, if you're going for like a potential Visa Summer Tara into Baron line, that means you're going to be using uh, Talamence Murley, right? So let's say you go for your Ancient Fairy Dragon, Special Murley, Revolution Synchron, make Visas, then you tune your Visas with your Murley and get a Murley Engrave. And then at that point, you send another monster. Uh, that's a tier limit. so you send either your Sharon or your Havnus, and you sync your one to Garura. You know, very easy to accomplish in this specific deck, and even then, you're still milling a ton of cards, so you're probably going to hit, like, doubles at some point. Um, or, like, you can do the, the Distrudo play that I mentioned earlier, you know, Distrudo, copy a level 1 Revolution Synchro, make it a level 6. Point is, while this card is still really good for what it can do, you're more than capable of making Beatrice without it, which is something that's really cool about this deck. And then for the final Fusion Monster... You have El Shaddaa Winda. It's a floodgate, uh, depending on the matchups, especially if it's like a synchro deck, which do, you know, pop up every now and then, thanks to the release of Duelist Nexus, uh, can stream just win the game. And with that, that's the Tailament deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya!